1800s, immigration from Europe to the New World was booming. Up until this point, as the designs of steamships were still being perfected, they were designed like sailing ships. The shape of ships really hadn't been reconsidered, and with the new advent of screw-driven steam propulsion and hulls of iron, a redesign was long overdue. Thomas Ismay and his newly purchased White Star Line under the parent company, the Oceanic Steam Navigation Company, picked up on this. Shipbuilders Harlan and Wolfe of Belfast, Ireland, with whom the White Star Line had an exclusive contract, designed for Ismay a new class of ships that was to revolutionize the shipbuilding industry. The Oceanic class, named for the Oceanic Steam Navigation Company, was originally only one ship. The steamship Oceanic launched in 1870. This ship was so cutting edge and profitable that three more ships were quickly ordered, and after that, another two. These six ships formed the legendary Oceanic class, the very first ships ordered by the new White Star Line. All six ships were built between 1870 and 1872, and the class consisted of the Oceanic, or the first Oceanic, if you know more of White Star Line history, as other ships with the same name would come up later. Ship number two would be the Atlantic, the ship we'll be focusing on in this video. Ship three would be the Baltic, which was sold to the Holland America Line around 1890 and lost in a collision in 1898. The fourth ship, the Steamship Republic, launched on July 4th and named after the American Republic in honor of Independence Day in the United States. She would be the only ship to survive into the 20th century, being scrapped in 1910. Ship number five is the Adriatic, noted for being involved in many collisions, but none of which did her in. Ship number six would be the Celtic. She was originally to be called the Arctic, but she was renamed after consideration was given to the paddle wheel steamer of the same name lost in 1854. It was on the Celtic that Edward John Smith, the future captain of the Titanic, would begin his career with the White Star Line as her fourth officer. Some of these ship names would be used a few decades later on another class of ships by the White Star Line known as the Big Four, but make no mistake, these are very different ships. The Oceanic class broke new grounds in countless ways, with the steamship Atlantic being a perfect example of the class's innovations. They were revolutionary ships in some ways, considered by many to be the beginning of modern ship design, getting away from the old steamers which were designed like sailing ships uh, and had side paddles. The Atlantic had a, a propeller, single propeller, driven by two two-cylinder compound steam engines. While the engines were indeed innovative, mariners and passengers alike still preferred the security of having a full complement of sails, should the engines break down or the ship run out of coal. Thus, the Oceanic class retained the full sail rigging popular at the time. In addition to the design of their engines, the Oceanic class was one of the first classes that had steam-powered steering, making it easier for the quartermaster at the helm to turn the ship. Next to the man at the helm was another innovation. The SS Atlantic was one of the first ships to have telegraph indicators on the bridge for quick communication with the engineers below. Her crew were not the only ones benefiting from the creative geniuses at Harland and Wolfe. The passengers were the ones to reap the most from the architect's hard work. Special areas were set aside for passengers to stroll the decks, known as the promenades, which were partially enclosed to protect them from the elements. On previous ships, crew and passengers shared the deck space, and they often got in each other's way, sometimes with dangerous consequences. The cabin class, sometimes called saloon class passengers, and called first class passengers on later ships, would be some of the first people to use the convenience of electricity at sea, although not for lighting of any kind. No, the ship was still lit with oil lamps, but Electrical call bells were installed in cabins and in convenient places throughout the ship where a passenger could quickly summon a steward when needed. The Oceanic class boasted the largest room on the sea. The Grand Saloon for cabin class passengers adorned with a piano and two marble fireplaces. We know they were marble because of the fragments of marble mantelpieces pulled from the wreck. But as I previously said, 
Ismay knew the value of the immigrant class, and special consideration was given for their comfort as well. Ventilation was improved for the lower decks. Rather than the stuffy, dark quarters seen on other ships, the Atlantic now provided a comfortable interior for immigrant passengers staying below. Some of the first indoor toilets on passenger liners were available to both classes, which was something unheard of for immigrant ships like this. While those on board traveled in relative comfort and convenience, the ships themselves had the ability to surge ahead of the competition better than any other ship thanks to the designs of her hull. While most ships had a length to width ratio of 6 to 1, the Oceanic class increased that ratio to 10 to 1 allowing her to carry more people on board without increasing the water resistance on her hull. With this streamlined hull, improved engines, and more efficient controls over the ship, both the Adriatic and the Baltic managed to capture the Blue Ribbon for the White Star Line. The Blue Ribbon, of course, being the award for the fastest crossing of the Atlantic. The Oceanic class were the fastest and safest ships in the world. And if you exclude the laid-up Great Eastern, rotting on the Mersey River at the time, they were also the largest. At the time of the Atlantic's fateful voyage in 1873, these six ships, as well as two additional cargo ships named the Gaelic and the Belgic, made up Harlan and Wolfe's entire contribution to the White Star Line's fleet up to this point. Yard number 74 at the Harlan and Wolfe shipyard would become the steamship Atlantic. She was laid down in 1870 and cranked out quickly and efficiently. The city of Belfast was pouring their heart into their newly prospering shipbuilding industry, and all their effort was put into turning these new vessels for their new clients, the White Star Line, into something they would be truly proud of. She was finished on June 3rd of 1871, and her maiden voyage was less than a week later. Her first 18 voyages were relatively uneventful, although she did suffer issues due to the experimental designs of her propeller, which was swapped out and replaced multiple times. The ship was laid out with the engines in the center, as with most other passenger ships of the day. However, also in the center were the dining saloons. The arrangement of passenger accommodations were centered around these rooms. The cabin class passengers were quartered in the deck house on the boat deck and the steerage in the ship's hull. Steerage, however, who were at times unruly and rambunctious on other steamers, were divided for their own safety. Because the engines needed to be directly connected to the propeller shaft, the boilers needed to be forward of them. As a result, the firemen and other engineers were quartered forward of there as well. Because these were always men, the single men in steerage were quartered in the bow in close proximity to the engineering staff. They were segregated from the single women or mothers and children traveling without a father who were quartered in the far stern in the opposite direction of these single men. This was a precaution to prevent any sort of harassment or unwanted interactions. Families and married couples were quartered in the midsection between them with the idea that the husbands, fathers, and family sons would act as a buffer should the single men become difficult to manage. The groups were certainly welcome to mingle on deck and in the saloons, but when the stewards ordered lights out for the passengers at 11 p.m., this sleeping arrangement was strictly enforced. 